Welcome to the Cryptonomatron, Anyong. Thanks for joining me here today, guys. Today's video is an ICO review on Carry Protocol, and it's the last video in my Crypto and Career Week on the Cryptonomatron channel. Sorry for the delay in getting it out, guys. I was away for a few days, but here it is, so enjoy. But if this is your first time watching the channel, guys, you want to know more about ICOs, cryptocurrencies, tokens to watch, and other related stuff, then please subscribe to the channel by clicking on that subscribe button and click on that bell notification icon as well, and you'll get notified as soon as I upload new content and whenever I go live. All right, thanks for doing that. Let's get on with this review. Pronto. So what is Carry Protocol? Well, it is a platform that's going to connect merchants with consumers using the blockchain. The platform is going to allow merchants to understand and communicate better with their customers. It's also going to allow you as an individual or a consumer to monetize your payment data. And as well, they're going to have an advertising platform that will allow advertisers to advertise their products. So the competition then, and there are quite a few uh, projects trying to utilize the blockchain to monetize customer data and allow merchants to find out more about their retail customers. Now, um, I'll only name three here um, because we don't have time for the purposes of this video. The first one is uh, shipping. I did an ICO on shipping quite some time ago. You can watch it by clicking the link above. And it's... Um, basically a uh, shopping marketing and uh, brand protection blockchain it's quite an interesting project another one that came to my attention very recently is this flus coin again i think it's got something to do with uh, flus flus they are going to utilize artificial intelligence to um find more information about their uh, um you know their consumers for the retail industry so again um, the data is key here. What the, the you know what the main thing here is to understand is that data is now going to be big business. It already is, and the more data you have, the better uh, a business you can be, and the more profits you can make. Essentially, that's what it's going to be all about. So the data is the thing that these uh, retailers and merchants want. They want to target people uh, that are going to buy their goods, products, services, whatever. And again, cutting down on the amount of um, people that are not going, you know, that you advertise to that are not going to utilize your uh, products or whatever is key here. And that's, um, you know, a, the key to success in streamlining your business and making your business more successful. Another one is, of course, Nucleus Vision. Now they are utilizing brick and mortar retail stores with their technology to, um, you know, basically, a, observe customers habits while they're in the store and then uh, you know you, you transfer that onto the the um, online retail environment as well so that they can understand what customers do when they're actually shopping using their uh, artificial intelligence and their scanners i think they've got some uh, uh, scanners implemented in india so those are just three projects again very very different um, you know in terms of what they're all about their approach and what they're doing but there are quite a few competitors in the retail space because as i mentioned it's big business if you can get this customer data and transfer that into actual sales then you know you, you that's the that's the end game here and a lot of companies are trying to trying to do this at the moment So the first problem they want to solve is that every business has a data silo problem. And what this means is they're not privy to all the data they really require. You might have several entities that are involved in a retail operation, for example, point of sale, a credit card company, um, et cetera, et cetera. And these uh, entities, they don't share any of the data. So they're only privy to the data that they require to process the transaction, such as the uh, credit card company knows the consumer's identification or who he is, but doesn't know what they're buying. Whereas the point of sale um, company knows what they're buying, but doesn't know the consumer's identity necessarily. So that's what the problem is there. And the second thing is marketing is very inefficient and also lacks transparency as well. There's no way of knowing exactly how successful your marketing campaign has been. It normally, it's a bit of a scattergun approach, just targeting a large swathe of people and hoping to uh, get some of them 
uh, successfully through your retail outlet. And the other problem is, of course, customers or consumers don't have any control over their own data. Um, and again, there's no way to monetize it unless you use a platform like this. And then the final problem, and you know, one I'm sure everybody is familiar with, is that coupon and point management is a real hassle. And again, some uh, retailers are still using paper coupons, um, you know, which is really uh, antiquated and ridiculous these days. So the aims of Carry Protocol are to build a platform that connects offline merchants and consumers using the blockchain. And this is important as I described in the market section as both the online and mobile and offline marketplaces have to be symbiotic to basically achieve the best results. Now, they aim to provide this platform for merchants to better understand their customers and also offer better channels of communication and also to enable consumers to control your own data, basically, and monetize that information as well. They'll also offer a new advertising channel that is effective and transparent. Now, the team behind Carry Protocol is uh, also behind a company called Spoka. Um, over the last few years, they've grown Dodo Point into the number one tablet-based loyalty platform in Korea and Japan. They've secured 10,000 partner merchants with 15 million customers, and they track over $2 billion worth of offline payment data annually. And uh, this is achieved in a challenging offline environment, they say, with offline execution experience. And that's what they think is one of the most valuable drivers and competitive advantages they have at the Carry Protocol. So the market for this is obviously huge. Uh, retail uh, is a massive market. And if you can capture some of it, then uh, you can be very successful indeed. We've seen Amazon, Alibaba, Tencent, all multi, multi-billion dollar companies. And they have realized recently that you have to have a synergy between the online and mobile uh, sales and the offline environment, brick and mortar stores, for example. So they're understanding now the importance of merging these two different uh, um, businesses, if you like. Amazon just acquired uh, Whole Foods for 14 billion US dollars. The offline retail market is worth 25 trillion dollars. So we're talking silly money here, really. Um, Asian companies like Alibaba, Tencent are also moving offline as well with purchases of shopping centers and hypermarkets. Again, um, offline retail is still going to uh, be quite uh, dominant because people like the hands-on experience. People like walking around, uh, you know, shopping malls. They don't like to just use the uh, the, the online services as convenient uh, as those online services are there still is a massive demand for uh, shopping and if you merge the two businesses the online and mobile with the um, offline then you can offer seamless branding across uh, both platforms you can also utilize your online channels to drive offline purchases as well and get people into your stores and also vice versa too you can um, use your offline channels to drive people online <laughs> So the blockchain here has several uses. Um, number one, it will act as a tokenized ecosystem for payments in brick and mortar stores. So uh, customers can pay in the carry token, the CRE, which is the ticker of the ecosystem. They can also uh, pay in the branded tokens. Now, issuing branded tokens will also allow the uh, merchants to offer reward points, if you like, in the form of their tokens. And also, it will allow them to offer a loyalty point scheme as well. So if a customer's coming back all the time, they will benefit, that type of thing. So there's quite a lot of, uh, of uses. In addition to the... Um, native token on the ecosystem and the branded tokens. Uh, the uh, payments can also be made in Bitcoin and Ethereum, which I think is important as a lot of people will be using, especially Bitcoin in the future as a um, payment, uh, if you like. And also you'll be able to make payments in fiat currency. Again, very important because there's a lot of people not comfortable with the volatility of cryptocurrency at the moment and won't elect to pay in cryptocurrency. So. Uh, you know, having fiat as a pay uh, payment system is uh, probably very, very important here. So the next part is the consumer being able to sell their data or monetize their payment data. So 
you will get a reward in the carry token, CRE token, if you decide to monetize your data. So you can also collect the digital coupons and loyalty points that are offered through the branded tokens from the merchant as well. And everything's going to be protected. It's going to be private as well um, and through anonymity shield and data encryption as well. So another cool thing is using the branded tokens not only as a loyalty system but to also uh, advertise on the platform. So you'll be able to utilize all this transaction data that's being accumulated and um, that the uh, consumers give to the system in exchange for the CRE tokens. And your branded tokens as a merchant can then be used to, uh, to pay for adverts, basically. You can have, um, say, for example, coupon style adverts or branded adverts on the app um, that just appear when the uh, consumer is using the app. And as well, you'll be able to use the data to target specific groups of consumers and individuals as well that have shown uh, previous shopping habits or history um, and are more likely to it be, uh, um, you know, to use your services or buy your products. So that's what it's all about, targeting advertisements and also finding right people, therefore saving you money rather than um, paying for big blanket ads that only will apply to a very, very small percentage of the people that you target. You will actually be able to target people that are more likely to use your services. So if you opt to receive ads as a consumer, you will also receive the carry token on top of the branded token as a reward for allowing yourself to be exposed to these adverts. Now, consumers, you can set the minimum threshold for the level of carry rewards so that um, branded token ads are only sent when a certain number of carry have been received um, as a mechanism to protect yourself from indiscriminate ads or spam. So that's pretty cool. So if, unless you're getting um, a healthy reward, you can basically say, I'm not interested in seeing these adverts. <laughs> So in terms of tech, well, they've already got this Spoka, who are their flagship partner behind this project. Now, they are the number one brick and mortar rewards platform in South Korea. They're also very active in Japan as well. I believe, as you can see here, they've got seven years of experience, 10,000 partner stores participating in the Spoka rewards platform, 15 million customers, would you believe, and over 1 billion in transactions going through the system. Now, as you can see here, the uh, partners for Spoke are quite impressive indeed. They have Kakao, Line, Facebook even, and the clients include Nike, Grand Hyatt, and JW Marriott. They've been featured in all the different media channels as well and won awards too. So they're quite an influential business. Now, what they have as their reward system is this... Um, a dodo point loyalty service i think it's called and basically what happens is you've got a tablet in the store and you choose to opt in um, and when you do so you accrue loyalty points so i guess it's a natural progression for them to want to uh, uh, tokenize this ecosystem and put the data on the blockchain so the dodo point system works with a tablet device in the retail store and this um, is the other um important technological thing about this project it requires the tablet to work so if there's no tablet in the retail environment in the brick and mortar store then this uh, system just uh, won't work at all so i did mention they do have the um the dodo points reward system that's done by uh, spoka but uh, you know, the blockchain's a different matter. So it'll be uh, interesting to see how they're going to implement it. And as you can see from the infographic from the website, it's a very simple process. You walk into the store, you make your payment in cryptocurrency or fiat money, and then you choose to opt in using the existing tablets that the Dodo points reward system are already using. So again, it can't work without the, uh, the tablet being in the retail environment. The information or the data that you monetize are sent to the carry network. It's also accessible to the advertisers to uh, target their ads towards you and you, re you receive a reward in branded tokens and um, carry tokens as well as a result. So just to expand a little further on what Dodo Point also offers, um, as I said, it's backed by Spoka. It is actually a growing business at the moment. Um, so. Uh, they've got quite a, a decent customer base already. They offer a tablet-based loyalty service for the offline store. So basically, you can opt into their loyalty point scheme by entering your phone number into the Dodo tablet that's available whenever you make a purchase in a brick-and-mortar retail store. They have the Dodo message, which is coupon automation uh, for rewards points via the messaging app. So um, Line, Facebook, you receive... Um, 
little messages with coupon codes and stuff like that. There's also Dodo ads, which is targeted advertising with the data collected from the consumer. And then there's Dodo manager as well, which is an admin and control panel for the merchants to access to. So the token has three main uses. The first one is to execute smart contracts. Now you can stake a fixed amount of the carry token or you can pay as you go, but that's required to use the smart contract to access the various features of the carry protocol. It will also be given uh, as reward in exchange for advertisements. So it will be provided to the consumer, the ad service provider or the wallet, depending on how the ad is conducted. It will be given as a reward. Um, and uh, the carry token itself can be used as a means of payment along with bitcoin ethereum and of course fiat payments just as they use at the moment in a, in a retail environment so you'll be able to um, use your carry to buy a pair of jeans a coffee or whatever else it will also be tradable on external exchanges after the ico so it is an inflationary currency as well we can't go on without mentioning that and that means more of these tokens will be actually available in the future and that will depend on a number of factors including um, assessment of the value of new transaction data uh, in comparison to the value of the already accumulated transaction data as well and um, there's a uh, more about that in the white paper i won't go into great detail on it just so that you know it is an inflationary token I don't believe there's any red flags or scam warnings about this project. The project is legit. It's been backed by Hash, who are a um, accelerator, startup accelerator based in Korea. And the fact that they're already um, an existing business means you can be rest assured that the, this is not a scam ICO. At the moment, unfortunately, ICO details are sketchy. Um, I assume that they're going to start KYC processes soon. So I don't know who is actually allowed to participate or not at the moment. Now, um, the only thing we really have are the token distribution details from the white paper. 10 billion tokens will be issued. 40% uh, will be for supporters or uh, crowd sale participants. 25% will be allocated to the partner program. 15% for market activity. 10% for the team, 5% will be held in uh, reserve, and 5% will go to the advisors as well. And as I say, there's not much information at all on the token sale details, so it will be very hard for me to score this ICO accurately in the verdict. But um, I'll give it a go, and then I'll update the token sale details as and when we receive them from the, the team. So the bounty campaign has just been announced. It's only uh, going to include video content creators and written content creators as well. There's 3 million carry tokens to be distributed. So that means there will be 1.2 million carry tokens for YouTube producers and 1.8 million for bloggers as well. Now they will be distributed depending on the number of views you get if you're a YouTuber and also the quality if you're a blogger as well. As usual, I'll leave the link below if you want to participate. That's where you can find it. So the roadmap is pretty uh, vague and it's quite long as well to boot. Second half of this year, smart contracts and API will be implemented. 2019, you will see the reference wallet, reference point of sale transitioning to a production wallet and production point of sale. And in the first half of 2020, you'll see the ad management system come online, we hope. But we really, um, really need more detail to this roadmap. And, uh, you know, we, we need to know exactly what's going to be implemented and when. It's too vague for my liking. So the team is obviously able to implement. They've already implemented Spoka. So uh, that goes some way in reassuring some uh, in investors that may be looking for a working product. Now, uh, Grant and Richard are the co-CEOs. They've both been involved in Spoka together. They have over 17 years in uh, combined experience as well that's relevant to this particular project. They have a lot of developers. Uh, they've got a couple of project managers and designers as well. Now, I've never used the... Um, uh, Dodo Point 
uh, loyalty program. Of course, I'm not Korean, but uh, you know, I assume that it's quite good if they've got so many people using it and a lot of these uh, merchants using it. It must be pretty decent. And uh, at the bottom here, uh, there's Min Kim there. He's a developer. I believe he's involved in another couple of uh, Korean projects as well. So uh, the only thing that really is holding this team back is there's no advisors, which I find is quite strange. But again, uh, they may think they don't need them as they've already uh, been able to implement this Spoka quite effectively and transferring it onto the blockchain may not be uh, the most difficult thing they've ever done, to be honest. So this project has two major partners. Uh, one is uh, Spoka, who I've uh, spoken about throughout the review, and they have partners, clients, and also um, won awards as well previously. Now, they're already backed by a top-tier investor called Hashed. I've mentioned them on other videos as well, including the one I've linked to above. Now, they are Korea's top crypto fund and accelerator for blockchain projects, and they are, uh, they've are they backed Kyber Network, Omisigo, uh, EOS, and Icon, including many, many others. And uh, if you watch the video, you'll find out a little bit more about them. Um, very, very... Um, successful uh, accelerator. I think they started off with about 600,000 US and now they've got assets under management over a quarter of a billion. So in terms of hype behind this project, there seems to be quite a lot of hype building. A couple of you guys actually asked me to do this review video, so uh, here it is. And I felt it had to be included in the Korea week instead of uh, revisiting it later on, even though we don't have full tokenomics at our disposal yet. And as I said, I'll update uh, the video in the description later on when we do actually get those uh, those details, the token prices, um, etc. So. In terms of community, they're quite active. Uh, they've got a Medium blog with a few posts on it. Um, they've also got quite an impressive 24,964 members on their English-speaking Telegram group. Um, a little bit less on their Korean group, 240 members there. Um, and Twitter, they've got uh, 13,700 followers at a minimum. So that's pretty impressive. And as I said, the hype is building behind this project. So it will be uh, interesting to see when the token prices get released, if the metrics all work out. Um, it should drive this project to success, at least at the ICO um, and maybe beyond. Okay, it's verdict time again. And first of all, the positives that I see in this ICO. Now, the first one's got to be the partnership with um, Spoka, who are Asia's number one loyalty points program, or at least the uh, Dodo points reward system is. And again, having this um, reward system behind the project already is is very, very important to towards success. Um, they've already got 10,000 merchants using it and over 15 million customers with billions of dollars worth of business being done through it as well. Um, the team has obviously the relevant experience to make this project work. They've got experience in this particular environment and behind a similar uh, implementation as well, which again is going to be key to the success here of this project. Number three on my positives list is the partners and clients uh, could be the key to this success. Now, um, Spoka have key clients such as Nike and JW Marriott, um, those are huge companies. And having them already on board, um, it, won't, it won't take much to convince them to uh, um, utilize this carry protocol. Indeed, with the popularity of cryptocurrency uh, coming for payments and merch, more and more merchants choosing to accept it, then uh, you know these uh, bigger companies are going to see this as an easy way to test the water of this new technology. And I think uh, the you know having the, them on board already could be key to the success of the carry protocol in future. And this could also give them a competitive edge, having the clients, having the customer base already and having the people using the Dodo Points reward system will allow them to scale a lot quicker than uh, just starting a business from absolute scratch. So having all these customers there already and the merchants means that they can uh, get where they want to be quicker than the, the competition and that's going to be important too. Now, I also think this is a good use of blockchain technology. Information is limited on it. But uh, again, I see this um, as an ideal use for the blockchain. 
Uh, this has an important token function as well. The carry token will be used not only as a loyalty point scheme as well, but to launch branded tokens, which is a pretty cool feature. So the token has an integral function here. It's not just an add-on um, you know, to raise money through an ICO. And of course, the branded tokenization will ensure that merchants adopt this because again, it goes back to what I was saying before about the bigger clients. If you're a small to medium enterprise, small to medium business, a retailer, then this is an easy way for you to get on the cryptocurrency bandwagon and actually have your own token, which is so cool. And it's something that a lot of retailers will be looking uh, to do. And it will also be hassle free to an extent as well. You know, you won't have to really think about it. Everything will be done for you. And you'll be able to use your branded token as loyalty rewards, as well as accepting it for payment for your uh, goods and services. So again, that's a real, real big positive. Uh, number eight, we talked about the market very briefly on this project, but I believe that this is a potential trillion dollar market and it's going to grow as well. Uh, offline retail accounts for $25 trillion globally worldwide. That is just an insane amount of money. And of course, um, you know, that, 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 that is, that's got the potential to be captured by this new technology and, and uh, new startups like Carry Protocol. And, uh, finally, for a positive number nine, it's got its smart contract on GitHub, limited information, but at least there is something there as well. So I had to give that a positive. So negatives now, and there are a couple with this project that I see already. Uh, number one is obviously there's not enough info on the blockchain tech that they're going to use that's available. Yes, I know that they're going to use Ethereum ERC20 tokens for the crowd sale. Most crowd sales do because it's the easiest way to really launch an ICO. But there's not enough info on the technology they're going to use um, in terms of the, the protocol platform itself. So I would have liked to see maybe a technical paper or something like that um, that we could read and find out what blockchain tech they're going to use. They're going to use Hyperledger. They're going to use Ethereum. Um, it would be nice to know. Second a negative is it is an inflationary currency, meaning that could potentially affect your investment in the future if a lot of more tokens come onto the uh, circulating supply. So something that you have to bear in mind. And of course, the higher the supply, uh, the worse it is for, uh, from an investment standpoint. And number three, this is a drawback, uh, but it requires hardware for proper use. Now, the reason I say this is a negative is they've already implemented these tablet devices for the Dodo Points loyalty reward system all in all these merchants that are using it. So it's obviously something these merchants won't bother about. Uh, but again, because this requires hardware, uh, hardware to uh, uh, be properly effective, that means that it's just that little bit more difficult to implement and a little bit more complex and that's why I noted it as a negative in this review. Now number four it's obviously the vague incomplete and long roadmap as well and um, from an investment standpoint we really need to see something a lot more detailed as what's going on when's a different stuff going to be implemented and um, that matters guys you know and um, it's too vague at the moment. And again, another thing that I noted was there's no advisory body, even for the ICO launch. Now, while I think the implementation of the actual um, a protocol itself might not need an advisor or any advisors, there's no advisory body for the ICO launch. So, you know, where's the regulatory compliance going to come from? Where is the, uh, you know, the, the, the advice being given for the tokenomics, for example, or token metrics? If uh, you uh, listen to Ian Bellina, you know, I would like to see some, some advisors that have been through an ICO before advising this project on how to go about it at the very minimum. And again, it is a negative. They'll be launched soon or even exposed soon. There's no detail on tokenomics. So we don't know the price of the tokens. Uh, you know, are they, are they gonna be a bargain? Are they gonna be expensive? So I can't really give a full review on this project today, although um, I was asked to do it several times and I wanted it to be part of the Korean week. So here it is anyway. And uh, they should be released in, in, a, in a few days, but it's disappointing that, you know, they, they weren't available already. So I've uh, put it down as a minor negative there. So in terms of my final verdict, well, uh, without the tokenomics, it is really hard to rate this project properly. Uh, again, you know, they could be a bit too expensive and um, uh, then, you know, <laughs> that, that will affect the rating in the end. But what little information we have on the whole of the project it looks pretty promising to me, to be honest. And I'm going to give it three and a half out of five stars because I believe this project has potential. Um, the, obviously, the main reason why I think so is the existing uh, clients that uh, um, Spoka already have. 
you know, the, the clients and the fact it's being used by so many people will allow this carry protocol to scale quite quickly to where it wants to be. And it could be um, adopted as the number one uh, loyalty points program, especially if merchants start to get on board and decide that they want to issue their own branded tokens, which I, I think quite a lot of them will, actually. I think it's an attractive proposition as a whole. Um, so, you know, we don't have much um, technical information. We don't know the tokenomics. But overall, this is a very, very solid project and definitely one that I will be investing in because I just can't see it failing given the amount of clients and given the amount of customers they've got already. I think it's a, a, a natural progression for the Dodo Points loyalty system to move on to the blockchain. It gives um, the user, the consumer, control over their own data as well. And it allows merchants and advertisers more um, appropriately to get to the actual customers or the, the consumers that they want to advertise to as well. So it's got benefits for everybody that's in the, uh, um, the retail space, the customer, the retailer, and also the advertiser as well. So I think this one could be a winner, guys. Definitely want to keep an eye on. So that concludes my carry protocol ICO review video and it also concludes the crypto in Korea week here on the Cryptonomatron channel. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing all the videos on Korean crypto and um, I hope you enjoyed them as well. If you enjoyed this video please give us a like and please subscribe to the channel and please click on that bell notification icon if you can uh, and you'll get notified as soon as I upload new content and as soon as I go live. As usual comments below are welcome. I'll try to respond to every single one of them and uh, let me know what you want me to review in the future. Let me know what projects you're bullish on. Are you bullish on Korean crypto? I certainly am. That's why I did these uh, seven videos for you guys, because I think Korea is a country to watch, especially uh, for some of the projects that are coming out. I'm really bullish on, on several of them. So um, again, thanks for joining me. And I will return tomorrow with another video. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, uh, but stay tuned.